I am Adam, and we are the Boston Brothers V2, and we're getting off right here. Where are we getting off? We are getting off in Revere, Massachusetts. Uh, Ryan, you want to tell them why we're getting off in Revere? Yeah, we're getting off in Revere. Dragon Gate USA is in Revere, Mass tonight, so we're going to Dragon Gate. Billy Paz was supposed to go with us, but he had to work. Mr. Markman was supposed to go with us. He has to work late, so he's not gonna be going with us, but I'm sure we'll see him there. But we're going to Dragon Gate tonight. We got ringside tickets. We got uh, high expectations. Adam, what are you expecting out of Dragon Gate here tonight? Uh, what I expect tonight, uh, I've never seen a Dragon Gate show before. I'm not at all like familiar with the wrestlers. I mean, I know some of them, like Tazawa, Ricochet. I know some of the guys, and I j just by seeing their names, like like on a site or something so I don't really know what to expect I know that Dragon Gate's a little bit of everything whether technical high flying fast pace is usually what they're known for so you know it's gonna be good because uh, Gabe is actually the booker he used to be the booker for ROH so you know he's got always gonna put on a good show so that's just what I'm expecting I hope it's a great show and I think that it will be Ryan what do you expect out of the show tonight yeah, like similar when we went to CZW, we had never watched it before, and we've never watched Dragon Gate before. But the difference between this and CZW is that I've actually, at least, at the very least, heard of at least 90% of the people on the card tonight. And all of these guys, I think, I'm pretty sure that they can all go. So I am expecting tonight probably some of the best in ring action I think I've ever seen. I think that I've always thought that if I saw Dragon Gate, I would love it because of the fast pace. So I am expecting tonight some fast-paced, hard-hitting wrestling here tonight in Revere. So that's it for us now. Uh, we'll see later if our expectations, if they come true or not. So if you're in Revere, there is one spot that you are definitely going to hit, and that is Kelly's Roast Beef. You can see it right there, right on the beach. Adam, what do you got over there? I got this clam plate. I mean, Kelly's is famous for their uh, seafood. Roast beef. Yeah, you got the roast beef right here. Yeah. Best roast beef I ever had. Clam strips right here. I'm about to devour them. I mean, should be great. Kelly's is awesome. We're like right on the waterfront right here. Yeah, like when we went to ROH in Plymouth, we were like, oh, you guys got to check out this beautiful waterfront. Well, how about this for a fucking waterfront? There's a seagull right there. I hope it doesn't come and get my clam strips. Yeah, funny story. That actually happened one time. We were here with our dad and, uh, a seagull came and took like his roast beef sandwich right out of his hands and flew off with it. It's, uh, the same thing's gonna happen to me. I'm predicting it right now. I don't know. I was sitting over here, but I guess we will. Uh, you gotta do it. You gotta sit in front of this beautiful waterfront. Billy Paz uh, say, "Oh, we're going to Revere. It's it's pretty nice there." Billy Paz says, "There no, there's no nice parts in Revere." Well, look at this shit. Beautiful. But yeah, we're gonna enjoy this Kelly's, and uh, yeah, we'll get back to you guys. Alright, so we made it through our meal with no seagull attacks. Adam's meal stayed intact. So your prediction was wrong there, I guess, with the seagulls. But now we are over at the Wonderland Ballroom. This place was probably like a mile away from where we were, so very close. But uh, we're in the parking lot right now, and just from the back, I just want to say that this is not like the nicest building. We uh, went around the front too, and that wasn't any different. Yeah, you can't really judge it though from uh, the outside, because... It's all different once you step in those doors. You never know how the place will look, the setup. Yeah. So uh, what they got going on here is they're going to be doing like a meet and greet, I guess. So I guess we're going to check that out. And they're also going to have this like, they're going to put on a couple matches from like a local promotion. Adam, you want to tell everyone what that local promotion is? Yes, uh, Top Row Promotions. I think you should all know them from uh, that Scott Hall incident that happened a couple months back. That was a promotion that brought Scott Hall out when he was not in... Uh, condition to perform or whatever so yeah they're putting on a pre-show we're about to head in we'll let you guys know what happened after the show and uh, also maybe if we can get some pictures or something we'll throw those in as well yeah. so either we don't know right now either you'll see pictures or we'll see our review so yeah keep watching so apparently they scratched the whole meet and greet thing, but we actually ended up making our own meet and greet. After the event happened, we ended up getting a picture, each of us. We got one with Pac and Masato Yoshino. So we're gonna have the pictures of us with them after we talk about what we just saw, what we just saw, Dragon Gate Fearless, 
2011 so we want to quickly like review that not go too too in depth and we don't want to give the results away either but we do want to talk a little about it so Adam will start it off with you the opener that kicked off this event we had Rich Swan versus Seema what'd you think of it now I really didn't know much about Seema going into this match but he came out with Austin Aries who I'm, I really am familiar with uh, Rich Swan. I know that he was in uh, the Super 8 tournament this year. That's like the only thing I know about him. You were saying maybe we saw him at CZW. Yeah, I think we did. But he would, he didn't look this good as he did in CZW because he was, he was impressive tonight, I thought. Did you think? Yeah, he was doing all these kind of flips. I was impressed by his like, agility. I don't know why but I was impressed by that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was the opener, and I thought it was a good way to kick off the event, the yeah. first Dragon Gate match that we ever, ever saw. Seen. And then the next match, I'm using a little cheat sheet here on my phone, I'm sorry. Even though we got a card. Yeah, but the card got changed. Like, yeah. this match got changed right here. Uh, it ended up being a six-man. AR Fox versus Eric Cannon versus Scott Reed, who is a local guy, versus Tony Nice versus Brody Lee versus Alex Payne. Uh, what do you think of this one? Do you think this was a clusterfuck or what? Yeah, a little bit since it was a six-way freestyle or whatever they're calling it. But I actually love the action during this match. I yeah, mean, exactly. this was everywhere. They were fighting like right in front of us on the outside, flying out of the ring. We ended up being second row too, so we were right in front of all of this. Yep. Just a ton of spots happening right in front of us. And that's why I really like this match because it was all happening like in front of us. And it was just crazy, I thought. Yeah, Brody Lee in person fucking huge yeah and I knew him from ROH and I knew Scott Reed since we always see him, him around a couple here times, yeah <laughs> so this was definitely a good match it was a good six-way all right so then uh, next up we had a guy that I was really looking forward to seeing in person I've heard a lot about a lot of good things about this guy Ricochet versus you gotta excuse me with these names I'm gonna give him my best shot Susumu Yokosuka <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think of this one? What do you think of Ricochet? Ricochet. Everyone was saying he's the best high flyer. I was that? impressed by Ricochet. Uh, he he was doing all these kind of stuff. I was marking out at one point for Ricochet, actually. He was doing these sick moves off the top that Mark Man, who we were with, he was sitting right next to us. He was telling me that he does things that he shouldn't be able to do. And I definitely agree with Mark Man on that one. Because this dude... He just flies everywhere. Yeah, and we'll actually give a quick shout out here to Mr. Markman1981. We'll probably even plug him here because he was with us this whole event, sat right next to us, and we had a good time here tonight. But why do you have these X's on your hands? I can just see it. Why do you have X's? I have these X's on my hand because I am under 21. Yeah, I am too. Under 21! Yep, so we weren't able to drink, so they made us into CM Punks. I don't really know why they made us into CM Punk's. They could have just put it on one hand, but uh -huh. they had to do CM Punk. You know, you're at a wrestling show. But, uh, yeah, Ricochet. I was actually surprised in a good way because I thought that this guy was just going to be doing, like, all flips and, like, all, like, spots and stuff. But he actually toned it down a little bit so it wasn't just, like, flip, 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 high fly, high fly. And that's what I, I liked about him. I think he was a heel. I'm not too sure about that, but I think he was a heel, and I don't really think he should be a heel. You don't Since think? No, I don't think he should be a heel since he's doing all these high-flying, crowd-pleasing stuff, making mock out. Alright, so uh, we'll move on with the next match. <sighs> Masaki Michizuki versus Sammy Callahan. Right off the bat, I'm sorry, I have to say this is the worst match of the night. I would Do have, you agree? I would have to probably agree with that statement right there. Sammy Callahan, not that big of a fan of him. Doesn't do it for me. Me neither. The most impressive thing in this match, I thought, was was this guy, Michizuku's uh, kicks. Oh, yeah. Those he was kicking the, the shit out of Sammy Callahan. And this was probably the most hard-hitting hard match of the night. Markman but, was marking out. Oh. Uh, me and Markman were marking out the kicks. That was the only good part of the match, yeah, I Yeah, don't get the wrong impression. This wasn't a very good match, but the kicks, they were good. They were awesome. Yes, yeah, very hard-hitting. So in the next match, pretty hard inning in its own right because of course you got this guy right here, John Davis versus Pinky Sanchez. Uh, what do you think of this one? Now this one was set up when uh, DUF, Eric Cannon, and Sammy Callahan came out 
and Pinky wanted to be a part of them. So he, he was going up against John Davis, who we knew from the Dark City Fight Club, from yes. ROH with Corey Chavis. Mm -hmm. So John Davis, I knew that he was this like, like dominating person, and he definitely was here because he got to work this little Pinky guy. He was throwing them all, oh, all over the ring. This squash. was a squash match. He destroyed them. It was fun to watch, actually, since he was just manhandling them like a rag doll, throwing them and everywhere. I actually think the better part was that we had, yep. like, uh, Sammy Callahan and Eric Cannon sitting, like, D two feet away they from us. They were the us. most entertaining part of this. Yeah. There was, this, this guy in front of us, he got up, he bought him two PBRs, gave them both to him. They were just entertaining us over there. Yeah, uh, and they I were even starting on claps and shit. Yeah. So that was probably the best part of the match, because this was just a squash shit, nothing. We'll move on to the next match. We had Austin Aries versus Johnny Gargano. Uh, this match, they took this one out into the crowd, huh? Yes, there was this little balcony thing there, and they were up there a lot. And uh, actually, at one point, there was like a suplex. I think Aries did it to uh, Gargano, and he yeah. went right, like, you you have to just have to see the arena, see that suplex. He went like right into the crowd too. Holy shit, chant throughout yep. the Wonderland Ballroom. This match got time though. This got like I think yeah. this was the longest. I match think that, that hurt. Night. It ended up hurting the match for me because mm -hmm. I was just waiting for this thing to end. Yeah, they kind of did stretch it out a bit too long. I don't have an exact time on how long it was, but it definitely felt uh, over long. a half hour. Yeah, but yeah, I definitely liked it. I think it was one of the matches of the night. I can't really decide on which one would be match of the night. This one was just a war, though. It was just a battle between the two. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah, so, like, a little long, but still good. And so now the next match, you were saying you couldn't decide on match of the night. But I think that I'm going to have to go with the main event for the match of the night. I really like the main event and the opener. But the main event that we had here, it was Pac and Masato Yoshino versus Yamato and Akira Tazawa. Yeah, this was the great tag team match. I mean, it was my first time seeing all these guys, and I was I kind of knew going into it, these are probably like the four biggest in the company. Yeah. And I kind of feel that way. Tazawa, he's definitely so over with the crowd. I think the face of DGUSA is uh, Masato Yoshino. Uh, he's actually my favorite. I think that he's like the face of it. So it was great seeing him and Pac, the, the tag champs teaming up. And this, they just stacked this match. Yeah, I, I like, thought it was gonna be better than it was actually, though. Yeah, me too, a little bit. Because when they were like coming out, the crowd was like already into it from the entrances alone, and it actually had like a big fight feel. I thought maybe I was just burnt out from uh, the match before the one like 40 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I was impressed with everybody in this match. It's like everybody had their chance, and that's what you gotta love. Uh, Pac. He probably impressed he me Pac. the most out of anyone tonight. I thought this guy was not going to do these kind of like high spot moves that he did. Like he was flipping and shit. And it just, he was looked like kind of a bigger guy. So I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. But I was expecting uh, Masato Yoshino. Fast motherfucker, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is great in the ring, in my opinion. I mean, he'll just do anything in there. And we he proved that tonight. Yeah, like something that I wanted to mention. Just it's like... I want to say like everybody in this match just seemed like I want to say they were just born to wrestle That's just what it like came I off to be like that. these guys were wrestlers. Yes, definitely Yeah, and that was the main event. We're not gonna spoil the results or anything But so uh, what are your overall thoughts of Dragon Gate USA? My overall thoughts was that it was a great show. I would say maybe even better than my expectations I, I just love this prom uh, promotion, the show that it put on, and I think we'll have a new promotion. Like, yeah, I'm definitely, definitely going to start watching this. This is a good time. I almost forgot. Made a couple of pickups at the merch stand. They actually gave these away for free, Full yeah. Impact Pro. FIP, the shit, shitty DVDs, but I'll you got it, it too. Free. So this we got is, these uh, for free. FIP, Stronger Than Ever, it's Southern Justice, by Necro and Roddy. And then, Strong. so at the merch table, I got it out of a recommendation from the Pasmanian Devil, Super Dragon himself. Uh, opened the Untouchable Gate. And then I also picked up from the High Spots table, the Wrestling Road. Yeah, Diaries. High Spots just set up shop there. They actually had the, 
Best of Night Show DVD, and that's not even out yet, so High Spot's definitely on top of it. Markman made a couple pickups tonight. Markman made a couple pickups. Markman walks right up to the table and picks up five DVDs or something. Markman, money to blow. But Ooh. Markman, you got a shit ton of DVDs, some great DVDs. I saw him pick up, though, that I actually wanted. I was jealous of Markman getting those, yeah. but I'm broke. So, I can't uh, pick anything up. What I was going to say about what I thought of Dragon Gate USA, I thought that overall... I'm going to say that it met my expectations. I know I said I set them very high. This wasn't like the best thing in the world I've ever seen. I'm not going to like overrate and shit, but it was very good. And uh, I'm probably going to start ordering some more Dragon Gate USA DVDs. And I think they're going to be coming back here around Boston. Yeah, there was a was Dragon saying. Gate USA chant to end the iPay-Per-View. So uh, if you want to check this out on DVD when it comes out or whatever, I would say to do it. Is it Ryan recommended? I would say it is. And my Just advice. because it is epic because it's our first. My advice is to pick it up. Yeah. I'm getting it. I'm a fan of the show. It's and great. just to add also, the Wonderland Ballroom actually ended up to be a pretty nice place. Yes, I told you. Yeah, you said don't judge it from the outside. It was pretty Inside nice. it was like a club almost. Yeah, there was a lot of bars like yeah. everywhere you look. Yeah. So, nice place good little venue for a wrestling event and that's all right it's all from Revere yep don't forget to subscribe to Mr. Markman 1981 yep. and follow him on Twitter strong style 81 yeah do that up all right so we are the Boston Brothers V2 thank you all for watching this we hope that you enjoyed it I am Ryan I am Adam peace <laughs>